Um, okay, so let's start again. We're going to chapter 26. In the it's, there are nine midas altogether. Nine in Kedusha, which is divided into two, becomes the tenth mida. So the tenth, right? So we, okay, let's begin. Inyan Kedusha Kofo. Right, so the idea of Kedusha is double. The Hainut, Chilosa, Voidov, Beginning is work, labor, the Sefer Gmul, and the end is reward. Chilosa Hishtadlus. Initially, it is Hishtadlus. Effort. The Sefer Matana, but the end is a gift. Okay, so again, we are just repeating. Yeah. We discussed already what's the double lotion, right? So Matana, Gmul is, 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 a, is, a, is, a, is a payment for what, what you did. Right and matana is just uh, is not really connected to what you did. Again, that's how I'm understanding. Mm -hmm. it. So that the uh, the Sarna, right, who was one of like the key enforcer of the early 1900s <laughs> on Misos uh he says the other way around. For some reason, he understands gmul as being reward that's not connected to Ishtabas and matana mm -hmm. being reward. And let's okay, let's continue. Let's see how it works it out. Um, Right, so beginning is what a person is mekadesh for himself. The soifoi mash So in the end is what he is being uh, sanctified from exter externally. And this is what our sages said: a person sanctifies himself a little bit. They mekadesh him a lot. Melmata, mm -hmm. he is mekadesh from below. Mekadesh Moisei Melmala, they sanctify him from above. All right. So the obvious question again. So this was the double. I mean, before also the 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 a little versus a lot was also from the bottom and from the top. I mean, what's mm -hmm. what's being added by this thing? What is being added by this thing that is from the bottom versus the top? versus, um, you know, a lot versus a little, right? So, so again, I, he says the, the opposite of what I would have said, right? So, but he, it's the same idea that before, Gmul versus mat Matana, all right? The, that, so my understanding, I'm gonna speak the way I understand it. Um, so when you do a little, so the, the, re, the Gmul, it's not like a salary that, you know, you work 20 bucks an hour, you work 10 hours, here is your paycheck, right? Mm -hmm. Right? That's not Gmul. Gmul is more like a bonus, in my in my view. Uh, Gmul is more like a bonus. You worked, uh, you know, 40 hours, whatever it is, you, you, you huffed and puffed, and your salary should have been $100,000, but you brought the firm, you know, $10 billion, here's your bonus of $1 billion. It's not really connected to how much time you put in and what your effort you did, but at the same time, it's not disconnected, right? What I'm saying, is, right? So gemul, in my opinion, is is reward. Mm -hmm. It's connected to hishtablus, but it's not. But it's it's multiplied. It's exponentially connected to hishtablus. Mm -hmm. Matana is is altogether. Uh, you jump three times, okay, and I give you a billion dollars. There's no shaykhs. Why, why should we give you a billion dollars because you jumped three times? There's, there's no, no connection whatsoever. This is how my understanding. And so too, that's how my understanding with the Chazal is saying. Oh, the Mekadosh, the person Mekadosh himself a lot. So he's doing the Kedusha a little bit. Mekadosh might say Harbe, but whatever he's getting, he's getting Harbe. On top of that, the, the Milmata, Lamaila, whatever your effort, you're, you're, jump, you're here on, on earth, right? And you're jumping to the moon and you're saying, I can't touch you, right? And then all of a sudden, you're on the moon. It's like your effort is, 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 is completely, okay, maybe that's not a good example, but, but a point, my point is, Melmata Lamaila is like the, the connection is, is completely, the, there is nothing that you could do mm -hmm. from below. Again, as we shall see shortly, right? There's nothing you could do from below that could possibly do Kedusha for you. That's it's just physically impossible to achieve kedusha from below. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no mm -hmm. path. There's no path. That's why it's completely maton. It has to be a gift because there's no path. It's Moshe Rabbeinu goes to goes to Har Sinai. He has no ability to. He, there's no human capacity to accept the Torah. It's just not possible. So yeah, we give him forty days. What's forty days to the Torah? It's nothing. What's it? There's no. There's no. There's no. 
right? So it's a matana. It's it's a total it's a total gift. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's the that's my, how I'm understanding what milmaila means because l l the maila in mm -hmm. mata is not just it's not just what's the word physical. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. What's the word? Location. It's not just location. It's completely l the lamaila and the lamata have no real connection. In a certain in the same because the lamata is is physical and limited and lamaila is abstract and unlimited there's no real connection but once you did your hishtadlos so you lamaila, get lamaila, sucked lamaila, up into a different realm lamaila is the prerequisite for, for, for uh, mm -hmm. okay all right lamata is just okay we, hashem told you to do lamata so he could finally pull in your lamala but it's not it's more than what i'm saying it's more than just ma'at versus harmony yeah. okay Fine. You, you got to do your lamata in order, in order to get sure. Right? right, that's for sure. Right, yeah. that's for sure. And furthermore, what's what's the, what's the ma'at? What's the little bit? Mm -hmm. Little bit is everything that we did till right. now. Okay. And let's just remind ourselves where we've been. We've been to Zahiru's, right? And he's very careful. And he, we went to Zerisu's and he's doing it with all of his heart and all of his energies. And then he went to Nikis and he self-analyzed himself and removed all possible self-realizations. Then he went to Prishus, which means he's, he's separated himself from Olam Hazeh and only took from it only what the minimally required. Then he went to Tahara, which was the transformation from towards self and ulterior motives, only towards Hashem. So now he's pure fighting internally in terms of that all of his efforts are really for God. Then finally he moved to Hasidus, where he was now that he was completely purified of mm -hmm. his ulterior motives, he was completely dedicated to avoid this Hashem out of love, and, and so he did, he went to, to, to all these layers and layers of Hasidus, because it's not, then, then on top of that, he went to Anova, which he reached a really, really full full humility. Then after that, he was able to achieve Yiras Chet, where he was worried about every possible, you know, no matter how far away, uh, what's the word, sent trace of sin that could mm -hmm. possibly creep into his life. And he removed all of that too, right? So now he is, he is a walking, uh, walking Eved Hashem. And that is still Ma'at. That is still ma'at. That is nothing. In comparison to where you're going, right, the the dvekus to Hashem, the enlightenment and the connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that a person achieves, that's, that's, it's, it's okay. It's, it's child. You did, some, you did some child's play. Okay? And, and it, right? So now that's where, where we are. Now he's in Kedusha. And also I'm reminded, we said this before, because we've looked at this already a few times, but the, the, the simple reading of the Chazal, before you saw this Ramchal, the simple reading of Chazal, or the Mekadosh Hatsum Ma'at, Mekadosh Shemat Sehar, it means, listen, I do a little mitzvah, Hashem is, helps me, and he, he gives me some other mitzvah to do. You know, and he gives me, two, I do one mitzvah, Hashem gives me ten mitzvahs. You know, we're talking about really us. This Mama Chazal is talking about us. Hashem, you do your, you, you make one step forward, Hashem will help you make two steps forward. Right? So that's what Mekadosh is. So a little bit, somebody, Hashem will Mekadosh you a lot. But that's not what Ramchal is saying. Ramchal is saying this Maimar Chazal is speaking about Kedusha, where your your you know your final destination of Kedusha is only achieved through this you know Mekadesh Atzmo Me'at, right? So I'm saying it's it's a complete re repurposing of this statement of of the Gemara. Okay, again we'll see in a second. We'll see that really. If you look back, we'll look back. If you look back at the beginning of this sefer, Mesilas Yesharim, you almost see that everything that he's going to say in sefer kedusha was already there in per kedusha is already there in the first chapter. Mm -hmm. It was already there in the first chapter. It's just over there. It wasn't as protruding because you didn't see the entire progression till the, that we got here. Okay, so let's keep let's keep going. All right, so so Ishtadlu, so what's it looking at? So now we know that it's kofal, we know that this mida is doubled, right? After all of mm -hmm. this journey, you still have to do Ishtadlu to achieve this mida. What's the Ishtadlu? So let's see. So the one step is you have to completely cut off from the Chomrius, right? From Nivdol, you have to completely cut off, right? From Chomrius, Nivdol, separated, right? Uh, uh, separated and cut off from Chomrius, from physicality, Ligami, completely. So, so what's the effort? I'm not sure exactly what he means. Let's we'll have to figure this out. I'm not sure if I'm clear. Uh, but the, the effort is that you have to remove yourself from physicality. 
Again, so I'm just going to specify, it's clear of that the effort and HaKadosh Baruch Hu's reward is really one and the same. Meaning, you're true. Okay, we'll see in a second. Okay, so now, uh, so that's the first part. And you cling always in every moment, of every minute, uh, to God. Right? So, so there's two parts. One is removal from the physical world, and the other part is attaching yourself to God. That's the effort that you do. Mm-hmm. And as a result of this, the Nevi'im prophets are referred to as malachim, as angels, right? Angels are not part of this world. Angels are not part of this world. So Nevi'im are called malachim. Why? Because they're completely detached from this world, right? Again, this is still part of the effort, meaning, again, this is the effort and the, again, I'm just trying to understand. You, you assume now, meaning if, if I'm reaching a madrega of a malach, but that's not my effort. That's my, so to speak, the, right? That's where Hashem kind of pulls me into being, basically being a malach, right? So if we're understanding, right, when, I, when Yaakov Avinu is going to, uh, to Lovan's house and he sees the, 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 the ladder, right? The mm-hmm. ladder, which is from Shemaim, it says Mutz of Arza. And the Shemaim of Arza explains that the ladder is Mutz of Arza, meaning initially the ladder is coming from heaven towards earth, mm-hmm. right? So where is... Right, and the, again, the different symbolisms in the ladder, but one of the symbolisms is the neshama of a person, that Yaakov is the ladder, right? Yaakov mm-hmm. is the ladder, really. And Yaakov is the ultimate Adam, right? So, so the, where, where are we as a per- people, meaning as a person? Where is the person? Is it here below? And the neshama is on top, right? And this is the anchor to the neshama, and I'm really the person, or really, it is the anchor to the neshama, but I'm really in the neshama. Where, where am I, right? Am I, we, we see people or we see souls, right? Who are we? Mm-hmm. So in a certain sense, at the beginning of the Sefer, we're people. And by the end of the Sefer, we're souls, right? We're, we're, in the beginning of the Sefer, we're bodies with souls. In the end of the Sefer, we are souls with maybe, maybe bodies, you know, like, like totally, it's the word purified bodies, mm-hmm. right? So... Um, fine, so a malach is the end result. The malach is the end result, right? But, the, but at the same time, he's saying this is, he's describing what? He's describing the hishtablus, the effort. So what I'm saying is the effort here is to be what the end result is going to be. And even though you cannot accomplish the end result, but through your effort of accomplishing the end result, you will be pulled towards the end result. Given the matan of the, right. You, you, pra- mm-hmm. you, 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 you play at being a malach and eventually Hashem will make you into a malach, basically. That's it, right? Okay. That the lips of a coin uh, guard knowledge. They, they will seek from his mouth. He is the angel of Hashem. And further says, They would taunt the, the angels of God. So we see that the tzaddikim are called malachim, or neviim are called malachim. But I feel b'shas his aska b'masim agashmiim. Now, right, this is a newer, a new layer to this kedusha. Is that even when a person, such a, when the kodesh is misasik, is involved in the physical acts, hamuchrochim loy mipas gufoy, which are necessary to him because of his body, right? His neshama is still nest, it still requires. Some physical, uh, some physical, whatever sustenance or activities, right? Because the neshama still has the guf, even though, right? Even though hamuchrochim again, remember this is post precious, right? Where he only takes what's muchrach. So even when he is doing all of those things, he neiloy sozus nafshoi midvekuso ha'elyon. The his nefesh is not pulled, is not moved. Right, is not moved from its attachment to above. Right. So again, I want to make this clear. Meaning, so every time a person is 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 um, is involved in a physical act. So we let's say I go to a you know I eat a, fa- a big meal, a big meal. After that meal, I feel heavy. I feel you know you can't tell me that I'm learning with the same and davening with the same kavana. As, as if I didn't just eat a, fa- a big fat meal, 
right? So, and that's, and that's, again, that's maybe the meal itself, again, that's, that's not a muhrach, right? But, because I didn't have to have, you know, the, the, the second helping of whatever, yeah. of, 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 you know, right? Uh, right? So I didn't have to have all those mm -hmm. things, but I'm a regular physical guy. I like filling up my stomach, right? Now, let's say I'm not that. I'm a person past precious. And I'm only, you know, I took a little bit of a, a you know, a kazais of bread and drank it up with water. And that was my whole in intake for the entire day. Right? So, you, is that, does that gashmius bring me down in any way? Ramchal says, yes. Any gashmius whatsoever, it's not an aver, there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with it. It's not, but at the same time, it's not possible According to Ramchal, it's not possible to be involved in Gashmias without the Gashmias having some impact on you, right? On the other hand, a Kodesh is so attached, right? He's so elyon, he's so mm -hmm. above, right? That even when he takes something physical, right? It, in, in, we'll see in a second. Instead of it dragging him down, he is going to pull yeah, pull right. it up. We're gonna see. We didn't see that part mm -hmm. yet. Right now, he just says that that physical <clears throat> involvement has no power to pull me pull me down. Right again. The way I'm visualizing it is, let's say, um, I don't know. Uh, you you have a kid, right? And the kid is a beautiful kid and a great kid and a wonderful kid, and he would never lie to you. He would never. And one time you ask him to put him on the spot, and he bends the truth a little bit, and you tell the kid. You're gonna to lie to me? I can't believe you. Now, the kid would say, kid gets all embarrassed because he would never lie, right? So he says, "No, I'm sorry." And he, right? And, he, and then he learns his lesson that just be, just like he would never lie straight out, mm -hmm. so too he learns not to bend the truth, right? That's good. On the other hand, if he could backfire, right? If a kid really, you know, maybe he never did lie, but that's because you know he wasn't pushed. Enough, sufficiently for whatever reason, right? And you, now he bends the truth and you tell him, ah, you could lie to me? And then he realized, well, this is a lie and I did it because I had to do it. So next time I could do even a bigger lie because now, right? So there's a tug of war, so to speak, which, mm -hmm. which reality is going to overpower, right? Which reality is gonna be more real, more tangible, right? So over here, so every time we a person is involved in any sort of physical activity, because we are physical mm -hmm. beings, so we open our eyes, we're, we're involved in our physical activity. We see we are involved in our physical activity. We listen we, every second, right? So there's a tug of war. Is, is this thing pulling me down or am I pulling it up, right? Mm -hmm. so, so according to Ramchal, again, as we, we'll, we'll see it in a second, there's no way for you to be pulling it up. There's just no way. You're a physical person. You're located in the physical mm -hmm. reality. There is you're being dragged down every second of the way. This thing is just keeps pulling you down. Okay, you try to jump it up and it just pulls you down. You try to jump it down, pulls it down. Eventually, Hashem lets you. But right, so an, a person who's mukudesh, a muktosh, right? He is so disconnected from this reality. He's so connected to the to the elyon that there is no way that this thing can pull him down. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Right up on that, so that's also a result of that matana. Right. That correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Shneamar, as it says, Dov konavshi acharecha. My soul it clings toward after you. Be tomcha imenecha. Your right right hand has support has has supported me. Ve'amna. Mm -hmm. Now he says like this. Ve'amna. Lefishi after lo adam shiyosim hu es atzim v'matzav azeh. Now, it's impossible for a person to place himself into such a state, because it's more difficult than him, meaning it's, it's above his capabilities. Why? Because at the end of the day, he is physical, right? And he's flesh and blood. That's his reality. Therefore, I say, I said, that the end of Kedusha is a gift. Right over here, this is a gift. Even though, no matter how much ishtadlus you will do, there's no connect, there's no path for a person to reach whatever Zen, whatever you want to call it. There's no path. It's purely matan. The only thing a person can do is ishtadlus. Now he's going to redefine, tell us again what the ishtadlus is. 
and I don't know how to translate these words, but let's let's figure this out together. Beredifas haidia amitis. He says the pursuit of yidia haamitis of true knowledge. The hasmodas haskolat the kedushas hamaisa, and hasmoda means con consistent, continuous haskolat. Let's call it enlightenment. Bikdusha Samaisa in the holiness or with the holiness of his actions. Again, I don't really dis dis dislike the translation here. I don't know why they translated it the way they translated it. They translate over here. Uh, so, um, Beredifa Hamitya says, okay, to exert himself in pursuing the true knowledge of Hashem. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's acceptable. But the next phrase, which is the more confusing one, they translate by means and to constantly delve into the sanctity of deeds. Here it says a diligent reflection of, of in practice of transcendent matters, close brackets, with regard to sanctification of the deeds. Right, so similar. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't, I do not. Maybe, I mean, maybe it's the same thing, but Haskola to me is, is the Kedusha Samaisa we're talking about, is basically, okay, the way I understand it, whatever the words mean, the way I understand it is, is going back to, is, is going back through the, the, right? So if I'm about to do a physical act, mm -hmm. right? So this physical act is now, Right, so till now he just said that this physical act is not going to pull me down. If I'm a Kodesh, this physical act is not going to pull me down. Now he's saying something new. Now he's saying, and he's going to elaborate on it more, but he, this is the first time he's mentioning mm -hmm. it, is that this physical act is actually not going to be a physical act. Because I'm going to be able to have Haskola Bekdusha Samaisa, because I'm going to have enlightenment from the holiness of this act. I'm going to see the Kedusha even in the physical act. Because at the end of the day, even the, the physical Gashmias is only a mirage. And if I'm there on the other side of it, that's what I'm understanding mm -hmm. it, then even the physical act becomes a, a holy act. Okay. Okay? So that's how I'm understanding it. Now, on a side question, right? I don't, I mean, we see this by Tzadikim again when that when um, when Yaakov Avinu uh, came to Lovan and he said, give me my wife, he used very language that was very, what's the word? Uh, vulgar, mm -hmm. in a sense. Because again, this is, I don't want to get into it, but that it was an illustration of the fact that it was a very, <clears throat> the, 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 the physical act was a, a holy act to Yaakov Avinu, right? On the other hand, we do find that Moshe Rabbeinu, who, who was holy as Moshe Rabbeinu, he was told to separate from his wife. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. even though, you know, we're talking about a holy act, and a holy time, and a holy whatever, right? And yet, even for a person who was certainly in level of Kedusha, you know, he needed to, to separate himself from this physical act. Even though, you know, by somebody by Kedusha, according to Yomchal, should not be, should not be brought down by this mm -hmm. act, right? Should not be brought down, but so I don't know exactly how to how to um, answer that question. Yeah, well, that's a different. Yakovino has to build the Kuala Israel, so Moshe Rabbeinu was pretty much done with it. It doesn't matter if he was done or not, because in my opinion, if oh, if uh, I mean so of course, right? I mean, I mean, I don't I don't know the answer to this question. I mean, Aaron and Miriam were upset, right? They clearly yeah, but did not understood that he was wrong, that yeah, he yeah. was, this is, so again, Moshe Rabbeinu may have been an exception to this for whatever reason, like yeah. we say, I don't know, but, so, okay, let's leave it aside for a second. So, um, okay, all right, so I'm going to come back to this, these two things, right? So there's two things that he says over here, and again, Rechazkel Sarna points out that these two things are the, exactly the same two things that he mentioned before. Okay, we're gonna see yeah, how, if yeah. they are parallel or not in a second. But I just wanna come back to something, just, yeah, just wanna show you the, the, the incredible symmetry 
the incredible symmetry of this sefer, which I found, at least I find it incredible. Um, so, right, so again, so what he told us over here that you cannot achieve Kedusha without Hashem's help, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Did we see this idea before in this sefer? Right? And the we answer is, it. yes, in the very beginning, mm -hmm. right? Not in the chapter one, which, we'll, which actually we'll come back to later in a second, but, but chapter two, when he talks, tells us about the Mida of the heroes, mm -hmm. which is a simple Mida, just finally, after the first chapter, where you understand what your goal is, your next is, okay, let me analyze my actions. I mean, let me watch myself. Am I doing things that are in accordance with my plan, right? With my goal, with what I'm trying to achieve. And then he tells me in the end of that chapter, he tells me an incredible thing. He says, Uposhudhu, and it's simple. Then even if a person is self scrutinizing himself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so he has no power to, 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 to save himself. If not for Kodesh Baruch Hu's help. Because the Yetzahara is very strong. Hashem as is a Gemara. The Gemara says that the the the, the Yitzhahara is is mechadesh every single day, and if you know, and and wants to get rid of him, and unless Hakadosh Baruch Hu helps him, he has no chance. Right? Ah, im ha'odom efakeh However, if a person uh, you know scrutinizes himself or watches over himself, oz Hakadosh Baruch Hu oizroi. And then Hashem helps him the nitzel min ha and then he is saved from yitzhara, right? So again, so we see this again beautiful symmetry. I think it's beautiful that the end of your journey and the beginning of your journey really start out with, or they, they necessitate a kodesh baruch Hu's help because again, in Ram Chal's understanding, if you're in the physical world, not only can't you reach kedusha, mm -hmm. not only can't you reach kedusha, you can't take the first step without Hashem's help, right? Right. So, so, so this Hashem's Oizroi is really your step in every in every single step of the way. So, you know, I always, you know, to me, the big takeaway, at least this time around from learning with Sisharim, is this idea of Yashrus, right? Again, he, we discussed this already a few times, and, right, and especially by the Rest Chet, is that or an anova, right? What's what's the yashrus over here, Mesila Yisharim? So initially, I thought Yisharim is the prerequisite; it's where you start, because if a person is not yasher, what, what, what do you do? He he can't right. Tell if you tell a person who's not yasher, um, you know, you gotta uh, what I, what will be. Uh, I don't know how to say this, but but uh, you see you see this that you tell a person who's not Yosho, you, they have to do something. They, they, they have a tendency to twist that something, and again, in such a way that they will pervert it, they will, will make it towards themselves, right? The person who's not Yosho will twist everything into the wrong thing. I mean, you tell them, uh, the, you know, you tell them, listen, you, you can't be such a tzaddik, you have to, you have to, you have to be happy. So then he does, and he does a various. You tell him, "Come on, you can't act like this. You gotta, you gotta be more ascetic." Then he goes into the other extreme, and he, he, he you know, he forces everybody else to, to follow the same. Meaning, a person who's not yosher, he everything you tell him, he just does it wrong, and there is no way to to correct him mm -hmm. without him correcting his yashrus first. There is no way to correct him, and so mesil shem is a prerequisite. On the other hand. On the other hand, it's more than a prerequisite because at each step of the way, like we saw, Mishkala Hasidus, right? The, the balancing of Hasidus is all dependent on Yashrus. Anova depends on Yashrus. Tahara depends on Yashrus. Every step of the way, the, it's not just that it doesn't get you off the ground, it really is the way to, to, to get through the entire journey. Is the, mm -hmm. first, the main thing you need is Yashrus, right? But now I'm going to ask you again who is the Yashur? Is the person. Let's say I'm okay. Let's say I'm a yasher. I come to the chapter one and I have yashrus. But it, is the person who in chapter one 
equally yosher as the person in chapter 20? No, of course not. As hey, he's growing, right, right, his yashrus is being developed. How do I know this? Because Nikias, the whole idea of Nikias is, let me get rid of my justification. Justification or rationalization mm -hmm. comes from the lack of my yashrus. If I had yashrus, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be self-rationalizing, right? It's because my yashrus is a little bit lacking. I mean, it's not it's not as vulgar as the guy who's you know on, on, pre, on, on in the hagdama, but now that I reach right to so each step of the way, my yashrus is being what's the word honed is being perfected, right? But but how? If I if, if I'm right in my first statement that a person who's not yashur is going to be every time you tell him something, he's going to pervert it. Well, then nobody is yosher. The, the only person who's really yosher is the person who's in, in Kedusha. Everybody in the, or Tahara, let's say mm -hmm. Tahara. Everybody before that is not yosher. So, technically, the whole journey, what I'm saying is, by definition, the journey is not possible. And that's really what, the, what, the, what Ramchal is saying. By definition, this journey is not pos possible because your yashras is crooked, and crooked yashras is just not yashras. Mm -hmm. There's no such mm -hmm. there's no such thing as half. I'm, right. I'm a half right. yasher, mm -hmm. right? You is either yasher, you're not yasher. But but at the same time, yes, there is a half yasher, because because the point is, I'm doing my best. I'm a I'm a terrible, what's the word? Uh, you know, vulgar physical individual. And if not, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is not going to straighten me out, everything I will do is going to twist it, right? So that's why, it, it, so really, at the entire journey, there's a two, it's, a, it's an ongoing partnership. I'm doing my best to straighten myself out, and Hashem is really helping me out. And without HaKadosh Baruch Hu's help, I'm going to, I'm going to flunk this mm -hmm. Yashrus, that Yashrusification. Okay. So that's um, that's number one. Okay, let's keep going. Um, fine. So now let's connect back to this idea. So before he said, what were the two, what were the two things that I was trying to achieve in my hishtadlus, right? What are the two things that I want to do by my hishtadlus? He says, first is removing myself from chomrias, and second thing is attaching myself to God. Right? How do these two things compare to these two over here? So the first, over here, he said, the two that he says over here is redifas ha'idiyah ha'amitis, pursuit of true knowledge, and the second is uh, the whatever kedusha haskola bekedusha samaisa, the enlightenment of actions, right? So which one is which? Which one is which? Yeah. Which one is which? True knowledge and enlightenment of actions versus. Versus removal from physicality and mm -hmm. attachment to God. Yeah. Right? So if they're parallel, meaning mm -hmm. if they're not backwards, if they're not switched, then you would assume that removal from Chomrius, right? Separating, disconnecting from Chomrius would be Yidiya Hamitis, true knowledge. And Attachment to God would be as called the Kedusha Samaisa. Yeah, sure. That's that's if it is. Let me just see if that's what the, the Beis Sarna says. Because uh, um, what's the word? Geographically, it makes sense. Um, a second. That's what he says. Okay. Yeah. So he says it like this: that ideas uh, mitis, the true knowledge, will. At no. Again. Jump too quick. It's again. As modas says, "Kol samaisa." Um. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Right. That, that's what he says. Yeah. Sorry. Right. So when a person. When a person 
has Yediha Mitis, he is able to remove himself from Gashmias. Mm -hmm. And if he's attached to God, then he can enlighten his actions, even the, even the physical ones. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Ach Hasoif. So that's, this is in the Heshtadlus part. Ach Hasoif, the end is, Hu HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yadricheyu Baderech Hazeh. The HaKadosh Baruch Hu will guide him on this road. Shehu Chofetz Lelech Hazbod, that he wants to go. V'yashre Olof Kedusho Soi Dikachehu. And he rests upon him, his Kedusho, and he sanctifies him. Right? Right? So remember what it says? to you be holy. Why? Mm. Because I am holy. What's the connection? Right? You're holy. Okay, what's it got to do with us? The answer is that we make our efforts, Kedoshim to you, we, can, we make our effort, Kedoshani, and that Baruch Hu sanctifies us with his Kedusha. Right? The Yasher Olof Kedusha. So, and he rests his Kedusha on us. And then, He's successful in this matter. That he is able actually to be in such an attachment. Constant attachment. Right? And I just want to point out that in my mind, you know, I mean, I haven't, I haven't experienced too much attachment, but I did have at some point in my life some a relationship with Avarn Moshe Shechter who was nifted this past week. And, um, that was already last week, right? That's yes, already last week. Um, and to me, in my mind, if, they, if I could picture a person who is who is niktash b'ktushosay, right? A person who's on this level that Ramchal is describing, I could actually, you know, I, I see it very much apl applicable to to Rosh Hashiva. Yeah, it's very weird because in Chaim Berlin, in my times in Chaim Berlin, there were only two personalities. There was Rosh Hashiva Zatzal. That's how, that's how they refer to Rabbi Tzachotna, and there was Rosh Hashiva Shlita, that's mm -hmm. how they refer to Rav Aaron Shachter, mm -hmm. right? Now, you have two Zotzal. Rosh Hashivas that are Zatzal, and now it's like, it's a little... I mean, when Rav Aaron was still alive, they called him Rosh Hashiva Rav Aaron, and his son-in-law, Rav Shlomo Haliwa, they called him Rosh Hashiva Rav Shlom, Rav Shlom, right? So that's how they... Mm -hmm. But now, I don't know how it's gonna... how it's gonna go. Anyways... Um, um, okay, so yeah, in my in my mind again, because there are different doylim in the in the world, you know, some are like Torah. Rav Chaim Kanievsky was like like Torah, right? There's nobody in, the, in our generation that was on the level of what I'm saying is like totally connected to the study of Torah is Rav Chaim Kanievsky, that I can think of, right? Rav Chaim Shechter was a different, a different type of a god. Like, it's not, it wasn't just that he was, he wasn't, let's say, in the ranks of the Gdorile Hadorit and the Torah scholarship, he wasn't considered to be the greatest of the great, right? He wasn't Rav Feinstein, right? But at the same time, the, the right, he's actually, his Sefer, he wrote in, in the 60s, he published a Sefer on Shas. Subas, I remember if it's other Amasachtas, called Avoidus Aaron. Uh, Avoidus Aaron, like the the Avoid of Aaron. So he was like Kulo Avoid, like everything he you know he did, every every action that he did, physical, spiritual, everything was precision, everything was was complete you know, there was no self. And at the same time he was of he was complete like his personality was so colorful and was so Full and so vivid and so lively that I mean the Holy Shiva was walking around trying to copy his manners and copy his you know because he was just such a personality and at the same time even though he was like total personality it was totally like selfless and totally like so just, I don't know I can't it's very hard to describe him as a person but the way I saw him was that that this this description of Kedusha of somebody who is totally connected to the other world and just a malach, you know, that's, that to me is, is fit. Okay, anyways. Um, good. So, Kimasha um, Teva, my name, so whatever the Teva, the nature, uh, rejects from him or holds back from him, Yazreu is Borach, Hashem will help him, the Siyu Yitin, and will give him his help, 
Ukiyinyan Shinamar Lo Yimna Toiv Lohochim Baton. Hashem does not withhold hold back good from those that walk betonim in, pu- in purity. Mm-hmm. And that's why they say in the statement that, that, in that I mentioned, a person does a little bit of Kedusha. This is whatever a person is able to acquire with his Ishtadlus. That's the help that Hashem provides to Moshe Kasavnu like we have written. Okay, Vihine. Now he's right, so now he's gonna describe the, the in full and more fully what exactly is this person that has reached this Madrig of Kedusha. Vihine ha ish hameskadesh the Kedusha's boy, right? Now the ish. Right, I use the word ish. I'm not sure if it's supposed to a woman. It just I think it means anytime ish is is a, is a, is a, is a, is, a, is, a, is a phrase of like loftiness, right, of strength. Ish miskadesh begedushas boy, right? A person, a, a man who is misk- who is sanctified with the holiness of his creator. Even the actions that are physical, they return to being. Uh, aspects of kedusha mamish really, the simonech and the the simon the, the, the symbol of this achilas kedoshim shehi atzma mitzvah is the it's it's a kind of similar to the eating of karbonis which in itself is a mitzvah saseh. But omr zecher lebracha kahanim oichlim kahanim eat ubailim is kaprim but the the, the bailim get kapar right so the coin is eating in the, you know the slam chop in the base amigdash. But I, as a result of him eating, get kapar. What's mm-hmm. Right? We're going to see in a second. Um, okay. But 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 the main the main idea is what we said before: is that is that this person is has is such steadfast kedusha that anything that tries to pull him down instead gets pulled up um, as a result. Right. Um, Again, let's go jump jump back, right? Again, just want to show you the the, the right. If you remember, and uh, if you go back for us to page twenty nine, right? If you go back for us to page twenty nine, which is the first chapter, right? This yeah, well, I want to go back to this maybe a few times, but in, in the first chapter, right? He asked so the first thing before you start any avoida, what you got to figure out what. What are you working for? What's your chayvas odem belom? Right? What are you doing this for? What's your goal? Right? What's your obligation? Right? And then he says three level levels. He it describes the same obligation in three different ways. So this is the third way. The third way he says the imtamik oid beinyan, and if you further d- d- go deeper in this in this manner, tira in this matter, tira ki ha'olam nivra l'shimush ha'odem. That a, the world is created for the service of Adam of man, right? Amnam he oimid b'shikul godol. However, a man is standing in shikul godol in great balance, right? Ki im ha'adam nimshach acher ha'olam because if a person is pulled after the world u'misrachik mubayroi and he's distanced from his creator he nehu miskalkel he is dragged down. And the world is dragged down with him. And if he is master of himself, and he connects, he clings to God, and he uses the world only as a way to help him to achieve the avoid the He is elevated. And the person is also the world is also elevated with him, with him, and it, listen to these words: because it is a great elevation for brios for creations, kulam all of them when they are being utensils my person has who is perfected who is sanctified with the sanctification of God, right? So. The world is misale from a person who is sanctified in the sanctification of God. That's exactly the you know, word for word 
the, 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 the line over here. Ha'ish ha'meskadesh b'kedushas boiroi. Right? So that's, that's what he told us right there in, in chapter 1 uh, of, of the Sefer. Right? That, that the world is, is for you. If you reach the level of Kedusha, you will elevate the world with you. Okay? Why? Because of Filu Ma'asev Gashmi. Because at that point, even the Gashmi, Gashmiistic actions will become um, Ruchmiistic actions. Good. V'tira ato ha-hefresh. Now he says, now tira ato. And see now ha-hefresh, the difference between ha-tohar la Kodesh. Between somebody who is Tohar and somebody who is Kodesh. Again, just zoom out for a second. In the world, if you could say, like, there's Tahara and there's Kedusha, right? Those two things are very similar, very connected. So in the, before, before seeing, seeing Mitzvah Yisrael, you would say, hmm, I wonder, what's the difference between Tahara and Kedusha, right? You would have said, well, Tahara is removal of negativity, and Kedusha is, I mean, Kedusha is also removal, because remember, we already discussed that the word Kodesh, Kedoshim to you, means Prushim to you, being separate, right? So Kedusha is an elevation. So Tahara is purification, Kedusha is elevation, and it's also pretty similar things. Pretty similar things, mm-hmm. right? But over here, what makes matters complicated, how did Ramchal define Tahara for us in this Sefer? All right, what's the Tahara? What's the Midah of Tahara? The Midah of Tahara is to purify your intentions that they should be only for God. And not mm-hmm. for you, or not for any ulterior motive. But at the end of the day, it's all for you, right? So, so tahara is purification of motives, right? It's it's mostly the tahara salev, purification of heart, is making sure that my heart, right? So kedusha and tahara, you would say they're not really on the same scale, perhaps. But again, I'm just speaking out. They really are. I'm saying the 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 the. I'm just pointing out again that that Tahara is really the key, so to speak, the key transition is the door between, right? If, if we're talking about the latter, right? We said that the Misil Sharm starts out as a person who is a body with a soul and then becomes a soul with a body. The key transition is really Tahara, right? Is when you purify yourself mm-hmm. inside your heart that you're com- that's when you really separate between you because at the end of the day it's, it's, it, there's a spectrum it's either me or it's either God right I mean, different levels there's a very me and there is maybe middle me and there's higher me but at the end of the day the f- when do I fully become an Eved Hashem when I remove the me the self-centeredness mm-hmm. right and that happens through the me of the higher right so now he says, oh, so if you already removed the self-centered, what, what about Kedusha? So what's the difference in Kedusha? So let's see. <clears throat> Once removed, we, we, now we have an empty, clean Kli that can accept. That can Kedusha. accept, right. So that's what he's saying. V'tira ato ha'efer shubayna tohar l'kodesh, ha'tohar ma'asav ha'choymrim e'nam lo'i lehechrechim. The, his physical actions are only necessary. Again, when do they become necessary? Really, that's a midah before, that's precious. Right, mm-hmm. but at the same time, that's what he's saying is that they're not fully just necessary unless you have really separated yourself from this equation. And my kavana again, this is where tahara comes in. My kavana, there's only that I need them as a necessity. So as a result, these physical actions mm-hmm. they remove themselves, they get purified from the elements of Ra that's present in every aspect of physicality, mm-hmm. and they become pure. Right? They're neutral. They've been neutralized. But they still have not become sanctified. Because if you could, if you'd be better, if you could remove without, I mean, if a person, if, if a person who's just Tohar, you would tell him, I'll give you a chance not to be, not to need to eat, not to do anything physical. Would you be on a higher madrega? The answer is, of course, right? Of course. On the other hand, right? It would be better without them. They're not hurting me, but they're not benefiting me as a, as a, as a, what's the word? As a spiritual being. But a person who's Kodesh, 
who's constantly, who's totally attached to God. Mm-hmm. And his nefesh is mesaleches, is walking together with muskolis, with, I don't know how to translate it, but, but let's say uh, sp- spiritual beings, ha-mitiyos, b'havaz boi full of love for his creator and his fear. It's considered as if he's walking in Olam Haba, in the living land, already here while being in the physical world. So at that point, you tell him, would it be better for you if you were not eating this suuda? The answer is no, because me eating this suuda is elevating the whole world. So I am doing God's work by eating this suuda. Right? I'm being uplifted, and the world is being uplifted with me by eating this seuda. If you tell me, take away this gashmis, I'll be better. No, I won't be better because I won't have this opportunity to be Kaddish the world with me. Right? That's the Kaddish. A tohar, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not suffering from this physicality, but I'm not gaining, and neither is the world is gaining. It's only when I'm reached, reached the level of Kedusha that I become... Uh, you know, they have the ability to even sanctify the, those physical actions. Um, okay, let's just, um, yeah, let's read a little more. Yeah. Let's read a little more. V'hine ish kazeh atzmoy nechshav kemishkan kemigdash u kemizbeach. So this man is himself is considered, is, 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 is ki'ilu, he is the mishkan, he is the mikdash, and he's the Mizbeach. Mm-hmm. Right? So the obvious question is, what do you need those three descriptions? What's the difference between Mishkan, Mikdash, Mizbeach? I mean, there's a mis- Mizbeach in the Mikdash and the Mishkan. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, my baby, why Mizbeach? Maybe I'm the menorah, I don't know, Shulchan. I mean, what's what's happening here? Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure. We'll come back to that. And as our sages said, Vayal me Allah Elohim. Right? Hashem went up from him. That we see that Hashem rests on the Ovois, on the forefathers, uh, and they are like the chariot, right? Hashem is resting on them. Vayalme Olav Elohim from him, right? Vechenomer the Hatzadikim are the Merkava. The old Tzadikim are really the Merkava, right? So, yeah. So Rav Chat, I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure if I again, it's hard for me to fully understand. But Rav Sarna says. That how always saying in a Merkava and Sadiqim in a Merkava, what's the point of both of those statements? Right? So his understanding is that Mishkan and Mikdash are two, within Kedusha, not everybody is also Kaddish on the same le- level. Mm-hmm. Mishkan is, is a more a kind of Aroy, what he calls like a ha- <coughs> less, what's the word? Less Kavua, less um, permanent. Style of kedusha, it's a, let's call it mm-hmm. kedush light, right? Mm-hmm. Mishkan is kedusha light. It's 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 not permanently uh, set in. Mm-hmm. Mikdash, on the other hand, is permanently set. So always in America, we represent um, the higher level of kedusha, and, and uh, hatzadikim in America we represent lower level of kedusha because not everybody uh, is on the same level of kedusha. Some tzedikim are uh, could be reached level of kedusha, but not as high as other 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 like always. Right, and and that's what he says. Mishk, so really, Mishkan Mikdash is Beach, The way the Rav, Rav Masarna understands is there's really only two levels, Mishkan and Mikdash, and in each one of them there is a Mizbeach. So the Tzaddik is is the Mizbeach that's in the Mishkan, or like the Mizbeach that's in the Mikdash. Okay, fine. Keshchina Shoyre Aleihem. The Shchina rests on them. Kemoisha Hoisa Shoyre Bimikdash, just like it was Shoyre. Rested in the mikdash. That's the first part, right? That's the the mishkan and the mikdash that 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 Hakadosh Baruch Hu rests on the tzaddikim. Once Hakadosh Baruch Hu, meaning mizbeach by itself is nothing. Mizbeach is only something if it's lefnei Hashem and if Hashem's fire comes down and and, and, and takes from it, right? If, otherwise, it's just a barbecue, right? Mm-hmm. Mizbeach is only something mm-hmm. if if it actually achieves that connection. So without a shechina shayra. Right, without the Shechina resting, he cannot be the Mizbeach. It's only once the Shechina rests on him that he becomes the Mizbeach. So, 
right? So, so that's what he says. The Shechina rests on them. Just like it was Shoyer in the Mikdash. And now, any food that they eat, is like a carbon that went up on the fire. Right? Certainly, it will be considered a great ilu, a great elevation for those things that when they went up to Mizbech, right? Just like when those carbonates that went up to Mizbech were elevated, since they were being brought of Neashchina, so to anything that it gets brought to a tzaddik is also elevated to a kodesh because his it's, shechina is on him. It's such an elevation for that carbon that the entire mean was elevated, and the entire species. Sorry, stop. So similarly, food, and drink, that the Yitzhakodesh eats, it's a great elevation for that food and that drink. As if it is brought mamish on the mizbeach. Okay, and if anything, again, we just finish up with that, and we'll continue, I guess, next time. Is that Tzum Gidalia tells us that really, um, right? Well, this that we say that that greater is the death of tzaddikim than the mizbeach, right? Instruction of the base of English is really we're saying is that is that it's not that the tzaddik is like the Mizbeach. Really the Mizbeach is like the Tzad. Mm. Meaning the initial plan, God's plan was not, uh, you don't have to say it, but the, let's say with Rashi's understanding, the initial plan is that the, the Hashem shouldn't be resting in the Mizbeach, that's not the plan. The plan is Hashem is resting in Shachanti is anew. Mm-hmm. There's a, meaning nationally, Hashem is renting, resting in the Mizbeach, but privately what Hashem wants is to rest on each individual Jew, right? And that's what we see by Sarah and Menu, right? We, again, I've said this already many times, but the, that by in her house, the challah lasted from week to week, and the, and the candles burned from week to week, and the, and the cloud was resting on her, because her house was the Mishkan and the Besamidish, because the Ove Sani and the Merkava, the Ove are the, are the chariot. So that's that's the initial Mishkan and the her tent. Oh, El Sarah, that's, you know, El Abraham, it's, it's, they're one, 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 they're one being. They were the Mishkan and the Mikdash. Okay.